On this week's Ask GCN Things, we will once again be answering some of your cycling questions. But before we get on to those questions, let's first announce the winner of last week's competition where you can get a Cannondale Draft Pack Camelback bottle, a uh, GCN bottle and a Cannondale Draft Pack Casket 2. Uh, that was a special Ask GCN thing with Joe Dombrowski and Ben King from the team. What you had to do was guess their combined weight. And amazingly, two of you got it spot on to the nearest 100 grams. So in fairness, we're going to give it to the person who guessed that right weight first. And that is... Thank you, Darcy. Woody938. The answer being 135.2 kilograms, should I say, although I was sworn secrecy as to the exact weight of each rider. Uh, but since we are very fair, we are also going to give a camelback bottle from GCN to the other person who got it exactly right, and that person was Dot Wesson. So well done. Write to us on Facebook with a message with your addresses, and we'll get that off to you as soon as possible. Okay, on with the questions. The first of which comes in from Dylan. And Dylan asks, I'm 15 and I race with adults. I also just finished my first season. I seem to get spat out the back a lot, apart from the occasional win. Pretty good going. But I feel like I bonk early and I'm used to riding on my own at my own pace. Any tips for training? Well, as Lasty has already said, getting the occasional win is very good in our books. It's probably more than we could do at your age. And it's also not uncommon to bonk and run out of energy on longer rides at 15 years of age. In fact, I remember one of my first ever long rides, around about three hours, where I joined up with a local group of pretty good road cyclists and absolutely blew my boobs off in the last half an hour or so, crawled back to where I'd parked to meet them and invested in a good three or four Yorkies which I chomped down straight away. Endurance is quite often something which comes with age last, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I remember when I was 15, 16, I probably used to focus on cyclocross which was shorter, but I did a lot of shorter training sessions and I found that endurance came with time rather than speed or power coming with them. Yeah, Matt, for example, can now ride for days. Uh, anyway, if you'd like some tips on how to ride further, I think the correct English is how to ride farther, so we got that wrong. Uh, we've got this video for you right up here, which you can watch now. You can do as much training as you want, but if you don't take enough food on a ride, you won't go half as far as you would otherwise. Eating whilst on a ride is absolutely essential, because if you don't, your body will run out of usable energy. Next up, this question came in from Paul Hesselgrave saying, why are your brake levers wrong? In brackets, right front, left rear. Does the standard vary by country or just rider preference? Well, in answer to your question, Paul, I think it varies by country. So in the UK, where we drive on the left-hand side, most bikes come fitted with right-hand front brake. I think it's the same in other countries where they drive on the left-hand side, so Australia, places like that. And there's also a motorbike crossover element there, so some Riders who have come from a motocross or motorcycling background may prefer to have their brakes moto style, which is also, as you say, the wrong way with your front brake in your right hand. Yeah, and if you find that you get a bike somehow, you purchase a second-hand bike and the brakes are the wrong way around, then it is a fairly easy fix, which Cy talks you through in this next video. I find that to actually get the cable out, it really helps to pull the brake lever on and then you can get the cable end out much more easily up here. Quick fire round now. First question, Dan, is from Psycho Warrior X, who's asking, GCN, if I shift my weight off my seat backwards, in brackets, to lower myself, do I lose momentum going down a hill? Or is it better to stay seated and lower myself accordingly? Uh, well, you certainly won't lose momentum from going off the back of your seat. Generally, people do that if they want to get more aero going down a hill, though you don't see too many riders doing that these days. Marco Pantani, one of the last riders I remember doing that particular style. Uh, a lot of riders these days are going onto the top tube, something that we've experimented with in a recent video. And actually, Cy is currently, as we film this, over in the US, and he's been in the wind tunnel with Zip, testing whether it is actually more aero or not. So keep your eye out for that video. But note, you won't lose any momentum. And and, uh, but ne you don't necessarily actually need to do it at all. Uh, next question comes from Yusuf. Uh, I'm 18 years old and wanted to ask why I should look into a career in professional cycling when I've got the opportunity to finish my education and university ambitions. I'm performing extremely well and I'm doing talent ID programme, but why should I choose cycling? What's the best thing about being pro and should I sacrifice my dream to go to uni for this? Uh, an interesting question because it's normally the other way around. People asking why they shouldn't pursue a professional cyclist dream and instead get 
their education finished. Lastly, you've been uh, well educated and gone to university. Well, thanks, Dan. Um, I think that is a very tough question, Yusuf. I think, if possible, you should look to combine both as far as possible into your early 20s. There are some incredible cyclists who did that, Marco Pinotti, to name just one. I think he has a master's degree, doesn't he, Dan? Yeah, I think if you're talented enough, you can do the university degree whilst cycling full-time. Thijs Benut from Lotto Sudau is an example of that. Uh, top five in the Tour of Flanders, but he's still attending Ghent University as well. Jasper Stuyven? Yeah, there are quite a few examples out there. Our suggestion, I think, would be to continue with your university dream and try and fit your cycling around that. Yeah, I found university to be very different to school in that you manage your own time, so if you want to get effective training done, you can do it, but it's just a matter of fitting, fitting things around and prioritising. Mm -hmm. What was the best bit about being a pro for you though, Dan? I know Yusuf asked that too. What was your favourite part? Um, I liked being around the big name pro riders and doing the biggest races. I was always a fan of the sport and just to be around riders like Carl Sastre and Tor Hushoff that were so good was phenomenal basically. It was like any of you fans being a part of some of the biggest races. Uh, moving on to a question from Edward. How do you maintain fitness when recovering from a shoulder injury? any tips. Well, we did actually see Matt Heyman do that at the start of this season. He had quite a bad shoulder injury from one of the very early season classics. And he actually trained on an indoor trainer while supporting his arm on a stepladder and went on to win Paris Bay. So if you really want to do it, you can maintain fitness on an indoor trainer, but don't go out on the road until you are definitely ready to do so. Otherwise, you're going to get injured again and really postpone your comeback. You ready for this one? Okay, this is from Daddy Digger one who says, okay, this is a serious question. I know riders stop for nature breaks, but what about when they got to do number two? When I ride longer than 100 miles, it seems like I'm always looking for a gas station so I can use the bathroom. Am I to believe no professional rider ever got diarrhea while riding a stage? I never see this mentioned or addressed when I watch the stage races on TV. Two of you gave that comment a thumbs up and Riyad Mahez replied very helpfully with, they have adult nappies, which is definitely, well, they do have adult nappies in supermarkets, but professional cyclists don't use them. No. Well, you do sometimes see professional cyclists uh, preparing to go to the toilet mid-race. I spent a year with a team called Giant Asia, which of course raced around Asia. And at certain races, you would see riders start with their bib shorts not over their shoulders, but down, in preparation for what they knew was coming later on in the stage. Perhaps with some toilet paper stuffed down the rear as well. Uh, but in general, I think you find that pro cyclists still get those nerves before the race and therefore visit the toilet two or three times before the flag drops and therefore don't need to go during the stage very often. Uh, last question comes in from Jake. Wireless shifting from SRAM. Will the next step be wireless braking last year? Is that one step too far? Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Dan, and I'm going to say I think wireless braking might be one step too far, in that even if they have the technology to have wireless brakes, brakes are such an important component that they're still going to have either a hydraulic or a cable actuated component to them so that should the electronics fail, you can still stop. Yeah, I think if your battery runs out for your gears, it's not too much of a problem, is it? But if your battery runs out for your brakes, that's not going to be pretty. I know, I know Matt disagrees with us on that, though. Next question, Dan, and I think this is one for you. It's from Gisborne on Twitter who is saying, if my average heart rate for my best 10 mile time trial is 168 beats per minute, can I use that as my functional threshold power or equivalent, I'm guessing, if I don't have a power meter when training? Uh, well, yeah, functional threshold heart rate is slightly more difficult to measure than functional threshold power because there is that lag time from an effort that you put into where your heart rate actually stabilises somewhere. So often the coaches will recommend that you take the last percentage of a particular effort or time trial and the average of that can relate to your functional threshold heart rate. But we did go into detail on how to measure this as well as your functional threshold power in this next video with Matt and Sight just up here. It's a term first coined by Dr. Andrew Coggan, and it refers to the maximum average power that you can sustain for an hour. So for an experienced cyclist, that might be like a 40 kilometer time trial. And it's really, really useful because it gives a great indication of your cycling performance. It refers to the point at which any work done above it is anaerobic and any work done underneath it, which is aerobic. So you increase it and you increase your cycling performance. Our last question is coming up now. Just a reminder that if you'd like to ask us a question, you can leave them in the comment section down below or using the hashtag TalkBack on social media. Uh, this last one comes in from Andrew Logan, who says, as a cycling noob, can you fit 25 millimeter tires on wheels that came with 23 mil tires? Definitely. 
In fact, I'm almost certain that's possible, Andrew. The one reservation I'd have is going the other way. So some of the newer generation of wheels are slightly wider. So you might find if you get a new set of wheels that come fitted with 28 millimeter tires, you shouldn't go any narrower. But I don't think you'll have any issues at all with fitting wider tires onto those wheels. One thing I would say though, is changing a tire can sometimes be pretty tough. And Simon has got a video here where he shows you exactly how to do it with his strong arms. Until you get to a point where you can't actually do it with your thumbs anymore. And that's where we need our tire levers. At this point, we want to use our tire levers in the exact opposite way to how we got the tire off. So you put the hook on, on the inside and then just lever the tire back on. Now, you want to be really careful at this point and make sure you don't get your inner tube caught in the bead of the tire. So if that's happening, you need to stop immediately because you might actually puncture the inner tube. Well, thanks very much for sending all your questions in. Keep them coming. We'll pick out some this time next week. Uh, I've got some more content for you to watch right now. So if you click on this corner just down here, you can find our seven tips for young riders, which might be handy for a couple of the questions that came in today. And if you have been injured and you want to keep training, click here and check out our training session playlist. There'll definitely be something for you there. Subscribe too. Click on the globe. Like this video. Always have the last word. It's in the name.